The Biden administration has spent nearly half a trillion dollars in just over 20 days. Israel starts their counterattack on Hamas, and it's getting ugly. A second aircraft carrier is being sent to the Mediterranean to back up Israel, and Iran says they are ready to go, go to war with the United States if necessary. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. Also, make sure to listen to today's earlier interview where I interview a Jewish mother who was caught in the rocket attack from Hamas to give you her perspective of what it was like. I'll also have another uh, expert guest on tomorrow with a completely different perspective of what's going on in Palestine and Israel. White House uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan has just confirmed that 20 or more Americans are still missing in Israel and another 14 are believed to be killed. In reference to those missing, Sullivan stated, that does not mean necessarily that there are 20 or more hostages, just that this is the number who are currently unaccounted for. We do not know the number of American hostages at this time. During his speech yesterday, President Joe Biden claimed he had no higher priority than to rescue American hostages from around the world. With this being said, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is currently on his way to Israel to meet with leaders to discuss strategy. I really hope Biden is serious about this commitment because a president's strongest duty is to protect the border, but also to keep Americans outside of the country safe. Now, in response to the evil crimes committed by Hamas, Israel's National Security Minister has just ordered 10,000 assault rifles be distributed to civilian security teams in communities at risk of being attacked again. So far, unarmed civilians seem to be the main victims of this terrorist attack, which shows the importance of being able to defend yourself. Currently, estimates show that over 1,000 people are believed to have been killed in the last week. Now, this is a very sensitive topic to cover. Uh, just like the Russia-Ukraine war has been difficult for me to cover because I don't like seeing death and destruction on either side. However, right now, we are seeing thousands dead, injured, and captured, and it is a scary situation in the country of Israel. With these numbers in mind, you might ask yourself, how could anyone in the United States of America support these terrorist groups? Now, unfortunately, in the age of social media, it doesn't take long to come ac across posts of people or groups that support what's going on. For instance, Black Lives Matter Chicago uh, posted an image of a silhouette of a man paragliding while holding a Palestinian flag with the caption that reads, I stand with Palestine. For those unaware, the attack started with terrorists paragliding into a music festival, uh, which resulted in over 250 people being killed. In response to this tweet, Elon Musk stated, your position is clear. Now, again, this is super controversial stuff because not all people that support Black Lives Matter support what just happened, but the uh, chapter of Black Lives Matter Chicago is saying, we stand with this and the people parachuting in, we, we support them as well. Now, do you think this organization and others performing rallies see Hamas and Palestine as two different topics? And what they're really saying is, we support the innocent people of uh, Palestine, but not Hamas? Or do you think it's a blend of the two? Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, back in United States Congress, senators on both sides are asking the Pentagon to send Iron Dome missile uh, defense systems to Israel. While these advanced systems are already deployed all throughout Israel, the recent increase in attack frequency has America concerned that Israel could run out of the ability to defend itself. Now, due to the simple fact that Israel has bipartisan support, reports indicate that Democrats will try to combine defense aid for Ukraine and Israel into one package. According to the Washington Post, the Biden administration may attempt to jam the package through to force those on the far right to approve aid for Ukraine. 
Unfortunately, Congress is already in shambles as Republicans try to elect a new Speaker of the House. Now, the Speaker of the House issue could be resolved very quickly as an internal Republican vote today selected Steve Scalise to be the new Speaker of the House. There will be an official vote, but it looks like he will be the next Speaker of the House. Now, again, what they're trying to do in Congress is they're trying to say, hey, you want money to help people in Hawaii? You have to give it to Ukraine. Or you want money to help people in Israel? You have to give it to Ukraine. And so because they're losing support for helping Ukraine, they're trying to capitalize on this situation in Israel to get U.S. taxpayer money jammed through for both countries. Now, this is scary. Republican Senator Lindsey Graham just sparked some controversy by claiming the only way to halt the war in Israel is to attack Iran's oil fields. Graham stated, for every Israeli or American hostage executed by Hamas, we should take down an Iranian oil refinery. The only way you're going to keep this war from escalating is to hold Iran accountable. While I agree there needs to be accountability, they first need to find out who is really accountable. Now, uh, Biden has drained the United States oil reserves. So, unfortunately, this makes the United States angry at the Middle East, but also heavily dependent on them in order to keep gas from going to $10 or $15 a gallon. Now, I worry when people like Lindsey Graham say, the United States ought to level all of Iran and take out their oil refineries because th this is a surefire way to drag the United States and possibly the world into World War III. Former President Donald Trump has joined the choir of people demanding that President Biden freeze the $6 billion in funds they're about to authorize and release to Iran. Trump stated, Crooked Joe Biden must take back and freeze the $6 billion right now before it's too late. How could anyone be so incompetent and stupid? Biden caused this war and it will only get worse. Now, do you agree or disagree with Donald Trump on this? Let me know your thoughts down below. The tech company Microsoft, started by Bill Gates, just received an IRS letter uh, proving that they are behind on their taxes by $28.9 billion. Yes, billion with a B. Apparently, over a nine-year stretch, Microsoft shifted ownership and stock around to lower their tax burden, but the IRS is on to their game and says they're here to collect. Ouch. A uh, $29 billion in back taxes? That's a hefty tax bill. Now, the United States will likely need that money I just read the United States national debt is $35.5 trillion. On September 15th, it was $33 trillion. This means that in 26 days, the Biden administration has spent half a trillion dollars. Half a trillion dollars in 26 days should scare everyone as the United States debt situation goes higher and higher with the only plan in Congress to print more money to get us out of this situation. It's a travesty how they abuse American taxpayer money. Just after RFK Jr. announced his departure from the Democratic Party, his siblings have publicly stacked up against him by voicing their disappointment. Kennedy's sister, Carrie Kennedy, released a statement on behalf of four family members, which called RFK's decision to run a third party uh, dangerous for the country and to President Biden. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, isn't the whole point of democracy to give American citizens choice? Or do we just have to buy into the uniparty system where we pretend Republicans are going to save us, and then the next go round we pretend Democrats are going to save us? In response, RFK Jr. said his family's feedback was painful for him. In regards to the claim that his father would disapprove of him, RFK Jr. stated, in all of the issues that my father believed in and my uncle believed in, if you went down and checked the box, that I would check every box. So I believe I'm very much aligned with those things. So basically, he feels like they've departed from their dad and JFK and that he continues to follow the way that they used to think and behave. NATO partner Turkey is causing a stir in the Arab world. 
President Ergodon of Turkey is telling other government leaders the United States aircraft carriers in the Mediterranean are there to attack Arab nations. He told them to expect massacre in the area. Now, do you think he really believes this? I mean, we just sold billions of dollars of jets and weapons to the country of Turkey. And now he's turning on the United States and a NATO partner saying, watch out, Arab nations, you're about to get massacred by the United States. By the way, it was just announced that a second aircraft carrier will be sent to the region. The USS Dwight D. Eisenhower is on its way to the eastern side of the Mediterranean to sit off the coast of Israel uh, to give more strength uh, and support to the country of Israel. The United States is calling on Qatar to act as a middleman between Hamas and the United States as the United States attempts to negotiate for hostage release for United States citizens, Israeli citizens, and other countries. Hezbollah of Iran has issued a statement against the United States and Israel. It said, We were not at all surprised by the political positions and field measures taken by the U.S. administration, especially the recent statement of its president, who blatantly declared an unlimited support for the killing machine and the Zionist aggression against the Palestinian people. This is the true essence of the entire American policy in its continuous support for aggression and terrorism since the establishment of this up, uh, usurping and occupying entity. We consider that the U.S. is a full partner in the Zionist aggression and it's fully responsible for the killing, criminality, siege, destruction of homes, and horrific massacres against defenseless civilians, among whom are children, women, and the elderly. Lastly, the head of Iran had this to say today, the Zionist re regime wants to justify the mass murder of the people in Gaza by attempting to show itself as a victim. Heads of the usurper regime should know that the response to these atrocities will be a heavier slap to their hideous face. So basically, Iran is coming out and saying, Israel is to blame, Israel is pretending to be a victim, and the United States is also to blame, and they should not be backing Israel. So unfortunately, this situation continues to get uglier and uh, really preoccupies my thoughts on how this whole thing could spin out of control very, very quickly. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. We are all just humans on planet Earth trying to make our way through the difficulties of this life. Um, I pray for you. I, I hope good things for you. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. These are difficult topics to cover. I try to cover them as fairly as I can. Now, before you go, please give this video a like. Hit that subscribe button. We're almost to 1.4 million subscribers and I would really appreciate your support. Also, check out this interview from earlier today and this interview from yesterday. Thanks so much, and I will see you on the next video.